Yo, what's up? It's your boy Currency365. Hope you guys are doing well. Legends never die. They stay in our hearts. Uh, if you want to support us, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also you can come down here and hit the join button uh, under the video uh, or in our channel uh, section. And you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash currency365. And uh, we also have Cash App and also PayPal uh, for support if you want to sell some seeds. Peace out. God bless. Enjoy the video and keep the movement going. Legends. Bye. All right. Greetings. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome all to Dorsey's Resource. First, as usual, before we get started, this video is going to be for informational, entertainment, and educational purposes only. Please understand everyone's individual circumstance or situation may be different. It's up to every individual competent person to please do his or her own homework and research regarding the matter being discussed. The information contained herein is not to be construed as legal advice. In the event you feel you need to seek a competent professional, it is encouraged that you do so at one's own leisure. Dorsey's Resource Channel is not liable or responsible for anyone's misuse of the information. Keep in mind, everyone is responsible for their own commercial affairs. All rights are reserved. Now, I want to get into the topic of the video uh, real quick. It's something along the lines. I titled this video, uh, New Quantum Financial System, uh, ISO Crypto Coins, GCR Reset. And I had like a question mark, something like that. I had a, a long title, but I wanted to. Discuss. This is related to the GCR reset. Many are wondering uh, what's been going on. Those for years, years ago, that have been keeping up with the uh, dinars, the Vietnamese dong, the foreign currency revaluation, and are skeptical. Uh, and you have every right to be. A lot of things have changed throughout the years, and I plan on discussing uh, some of you know, my, my feedback, some information that I, I got recently from one of my private sources, actually a couple of my private sources, my other source I hadn't spoken with in a while. Um, I had, I don't speak to that often, uh, but they have been, uh, a blessing with information they've shared throughout the years, both, both my sources, uh, by the way. And, uh, one in particular, uh, when you listen to different conference calls that are related to the dinar or the global currency reset. I know one, uh, people were excited to hear the banking stories. We've heard many of those type of stories throughout the years, but it had been quite some time that we heard like a story like that. That was very compelling for those out there that know or are familiar with, uh, I think that's uh Lynn's channel uh, that was shared with me. I didn't know who she was originally big shout out to the subscriber that, uh, shared, that information with me, but I got some information in myself recently from speaking to one of my sources I haven't spoken to with in a while. And they were telling me, uh, allegedly, as of the April 25th of this month, uh, and my other source was saying there's some important dates next month as well. But my one source was saying the April 25th of this month, all of the banks are supposed to be. Uh, basically QFS compliant or along the lines, if you guys remember Basel three compliant, meaning dealing with asset backs. Uh, I guess they have to have uh, assets behind the scenes, even though they're moving to like a digital ledger system. I just heard recently uh, that the treasury just adopted uh, ripple uh, XRP uh, something. There's some type of partnership or something going on behind the scenes. And I remember hearing a year or two ago, that when you go to exchange dinars, some according to some conference calls, allegedly that you would receive uh, instead of dinars, you will receive XRP instead to kind of give you all an idea because they moved away. They're moving away from the fiat, the old fiat system. One of my sources was telling me is referred to as the old legacy system. The legacy system is going to still be in place for a while. But what's happening is that the old legacy system is being phased out, according to one of my sources was sharing with me 
uh, as the new system is being brought in, the old legacy system, as it's referred to as uh, by people behind the curtain or those in the know, that that system is, is going to be around for a while. As you know, SWIFT, of course, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's the, the way that banks transact and do business, there's things happening behind the scenes that are changing. And some even suspect this allegedly has to do with strange things happening to people's uh, accounts other than separately from the scam stuff. That's totally separate. We won't harp on that. But I've heard rumors, I can't neither confirm nor deny this, that allegedly some sources out there are saying that with people having mysteriously funds that are missing from an account, it could be pop potentially. I don't have any, so treat this as, you know, hearsay or, but, you know, it could add uh, help for those that are trying to figure out some of the things that are going on. A video someone sent that they uh, they weren't refunded some funds and they, that could be an excuse. Someone was saying that the bank is moving their funds over to the new QFS system and the old legacy system. If there's a bank holiday, meaning where you can't uh, get your funds out or there's capital controls where they impose a limit on the ATM machines where you can only take out three or four hundred dollars at a time. Uh, that's form of what's referred to as bank holiday or capital controls, which has happened in other countries. Allegedly, Cyprus, uh, Greece, places like that, something happened in the past. I'm not the foremost authority on what happened some years ago. But for those that have been keeping up throughout the years with these different banking crises and things uh, are aware of that and uh, heard, have heard of uh, a bank holiday. And it's not what you think in terms of normally people associate holiday with a good time, a time off that people can enjoy, celebrate. But this is something different in terms of banking language or banking law. Uh, this is not good in terms for those uh, in a particular country or population that's going through a banking crisis that has to deal with a uh, bank holiday and then they uh, are penalized or they penalize the customers are hit with capital controls. That deals with like where you can only withdraw so much out of ATM machine where instead of the usual amount, four or $500 or whatever, there could be limits as low as 100, 200, even $50 at a time as a currency fiat system is uh, being phased out or going uh, as this new system is being brought in. That's just to kind of give you all an idea, but they're moving over to a digital currency system and it has to be asset backed. And one of my sources was telling me that if the banks are not Basel three, cause they had a certain time period, uh, a certain period of time where they have to be QFS compliant. So I'm going to say not just asset backed cause I thought they went through that years ago with the, the HCL, the hydrocarbon law, Basel three compliance, but I hear certain smaller banks or banks said they weren't ready yet, but I hear now's the time by April 25th of this month, they all have to be compliant and ready. And if they are not compliant, one of my sources, I, the one I hadn't spoke with in a while was emphasizing that they could uh, go bankrupt because they're in, they would be in violation of the new rules imposed and they could be bought up or absorbed by another bank, a bigger bank. They could be taken over uh, by a much larger bank. And those type of things happen under during bank holiday or capital controls or things get really bad. You know, many of the smaller banking institutions uh, are fall up under the Federal Reserve. And I remember I was speaking with a banker uh, one time. I was going to a particular branch and I brought in a folder of like a, another rival bank. And I said, why are you guys acting like this is sports? like you guys are rival teams or whatever. I said, you all are all under the Federal Reserve banking system. And the teller at the time, she knew what I was talking about, this particular teller, and she completely changed. She was like, yeah, you are right. Uh, I said, it's kind of silly to me. You all are under the Federal Reserve Bank. And I said this even with the credit unions. Mich For example, Michigan First Credit Union uh, is under the Federal Reserve Bank, just like J.P. Morgan, Chase Manhattan, the retail side at a lower level, Bank of America, uh, Citizens Bank, uh, all these lower level institutions, Fifth Third, that are still around, Navy Credit, uh, Navy Federal, uh, so many lists to name. Some banks have been bought out like years ago. Uh, 
Wachovia, I think they got bought out by uh, Wells Fargo. You guys remember Wachovia Bank. Uh, and then some banks are like uh, under uh, international banks, under HSBC, you know, dealing with overseas, like Citizens Bank has connections to overseas. But over here for the American branches, they all fall up under the Federal Reserve, just like the credit unions. And I called Michigan First Credit Union many years ago. I used to bank with them. Actually, I don't bank with them anymore, uh, but many years ago I did. And one time I was curious when I was learning about this information one, for the first time many years ago, I called them on the phone and the teller confirmed with me. She said, yes, we are indeed members under the Federal Reserve, even though they operate differently because they're a credit union. And like I said, I'm not an expert what the differences are with the other type of institutions. Some people say you get better loans and stuff like that with the credit union versus the other institutions. But keep in mind, uh, sometimes the formulas may change. The principle stays the same. The formulas may change, but the principle stays the same. What I mean are credit unions, uh, for example, you had, to, you had to know someone or you had to have certain stipulations to be a member. And they would have uh, some of the first, what I know of years ago, I don't know if they started this, where they would have the joint bank accounts where you could have your savings account and your checking account kind of combined into like one account similar to a brokerage account. By the way, I remember that where they would combine it. Then this, I guess, became popular where other banks said, we're going to adopt this to attract more customers. But keep in mind, they all fall up under the Federal Reserve Bank. And if you look up, you have an understanding how the, the IMF works, the International Monetary Fund, and some of these entities and how they're related. My other source also informed me that uh, dealing with the cryptocurrencies, remember there's going to be, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, I talked about this down the road because some of my subscribers, I understand, are into cryptos. And like, once again, I want to say I'm still learning. Some people think I'm an expert and I want to say I'm not an expert. I was asked by someone, uh, could I show them? And I said, I don't feel worthy yet uh there's people there's a lot of things to unpack uh i don't you know really at this time at this point in time i could do this with someone i, I prefer privately like a family member or a close friend i could share this some of this type of information with how i started investing but there's a lot of layers to unpack but for those that are involved in cryptos and understand i'm not talking about uh pyramid sites and stuff like that, like MLM sites. There's a lot of different sites out there, and I'm not talking about stuff related to scam artists, but keep in mind, cryptos, you can just buy and hold them. They're digital assets, just no different than stocks. Just like you hold stocks, you know, it used to be a point in time years ago where you had uh, the physical paper or like a representation on it on like bond paper. I have an example of this uh, friend of mine picked up for me as like a souvenir uh, at a coin shop that he was going to at the time. I won't say which one or where at was giving these uh, these type of stock certificates out, but it showed years ago how they transacted business. And it, and the one I have, I have it around uh, my place somewhere. I, I did discover it not too long ago. It had General Motors on there and it had the name. It looked like it was someone years ago and it looked appeared as though they had their social security number on there and on the back of the instrument, it was endorsed. It has something that looked like a medallion signature stamp or like a pay to the order of. So I know it was a form of a registered security instrument. This is where they used to do. They used to do things manually years ago. But nowadays, because of technology and we're we're all the way in the year 2024, all the way in the future. This is we're talking about ages ago. They did things, transacted things a lot differently and things changed. I was informed. I didn't know this originally. Uh, over 10 years ago, there was something in the making, and there's been updates since. And and uh, what the powers that be uh, plan on doing, what uh, was shared with me privately, is eventually there's a lot of crypto coins. Some may already know this from a different perspective. I don't know how they were already aware, but I feared something like this. They were up to something because I knew they were up to something. I just didn't understand it. When one of my sources told me they plan on getting rid of a whole lot of coins and when the new system totally comes in that's when you're going to see the iso coins they're being manipulated suppressed on purpose 
to allow uh, institutional investors to buy them up cheap or even banks because behind the scenes I knew knew this already. This was coming from a YouTube channel I follow. Actually, Snippy's channel was one of them that reported that behind the scenes, uh, J.P. Morgan I knew years ago was buying silver and gold behind the scenes. And uh, they also were buying cryptocurrency because I remember the CEO, Jamie Dimon, had, uh, there was a story that came out where his daughter had picked up some cryptocurrency or Bitcoin at the time and he poo-pooed it. Then it came out in the news. He turned around a week later and went and purchased some himself. So it was like an overlay for the underlay because they don't want some, sometimes they, this is one of the strategies where the rich get richer and they want the poor to get to stay poor. And there's a, a, a thing going on where the reason the ISO coins, where they're not allowing XRP, because I was wondering, I, I, I watched XRP in the last bull cycle that we were in. And I said, XRP is supposed to be way more than what it's at. I said, why is it? Uh, it had its pump last year when they won the lawsuit and everything. A lot of people, we thought it was going to go higher, but they were due for a pump. Like they should be with the price of at least where render is at, at like nine or 10 bucks. I'm like, why are they staying below a dollar? Because the last bull run, which wasn't even as big as, or is not going to even be as big as this particular bull run, or hasn't when we reached this all-time high, stayed below a dollar. I mean, it went up. So one of my sources was telling me that basically the IMF, uh, that stands for International Monetary Fund, and they have a connection, direct connection to the U.S. Treasury, they're behind suppressing the price, just like for years I had been hearing that either the U.S. Treasury or the IMF was the reason the dinar was being held up, that it was real. And we had private sources, bankers and stuff that actually looked into it. We also throughout the years found out that information trickled down the line from all the way down to branch managers to even some tellers, because we know that the Vietnamese dong was joined at the hip. If you knew about the dinar, you know, those two were basically par parallel with one another. And I've told you guys the story how I saw the teller flipping through the pages when I asked about it for the first time many years ago and her supervisor or superior boss came over and ushered the book away from her and then quickly told me we don't deal with it. But I had already saw the evidence when she was flipping through the pages. I could see through the bulletproof glass, the clear glass. I saw the images in there and she was looking curious at the time. The teller, like she didn't even know that I was informed many years later that they were told they weren't supposed to do that anymore. But in some instances, it appears certain bankers are under non-disclosure agreements, so they still may lie, legally lie, and say we don't deal with it or we don't know about it unless, like, you mention certain things where you just back them into a corner and you get them to basically spill the beans where they don't have a choice where it sounds like this guy that tells this banking testimony, he was pretty smart and uh, hit them uh, with some pretty tough questions. So they were... Uh, you know, indirectly, it was very difficult for them to not tell the truth for them to be honest. But I heard that they weren't supposed to be doing that anymore. And that, uh, but we're going through a period where uh, things are still not public. There's still things happening behind the curtain. I did hear a lot of bankers uh, were under non disclosure agreements, allegedly, and that uh, some of the sources that were talking to different people that did conference calls, they it was more difficult for them to obtain information. And I want to let you all know the same thing has happened on my end for remember that uh, related to that event that I attended last year, my sources that were in connection to that uh, more sources I had had dwindled down. It really wasn't that much information basically leaking out or coming out. They were tight lipped. And then one of my sources Basically, uh, they just went dark all together and they don't even really reach out to me. I had to really contact them, uh, by the way, you know, and, and try to see, you know, they don't mention anything at all. And I guess many people there in fear they don't want to be, uh, you know, jeopardized, uh, allegedly. Uh, but it's kind of hard to piece things together. I know it seems difficult because people say, where, where can you gather the evidence at? But I will tell you. Firsthand, from my personal experience, I can't force people to believe me. But when I was active with that particular group, I did decide not to go back. Uh, I did uh, have to sign or was kind of we were compelled to at the time 
Uh, but however, remember I explained how they violated the terms of the uh, non-disclosure agreement. And I found out more recently, anytime any type of fraud is committed because my package, it was promised that it was supposed to be returned at the time, according to the administrator. And it was never uh, returned as he promised at the time verbally, I remember several times, and some people even came back to these, this event because they didn't want to be part of it, and they got they picked their packages up and uh, just decided. But some those that stayed during that time period before he went dark and resurfaced in 2018, by the way, the whole story changed. And I was going to say, that's what uh, once some somebody who was a member behind the scenes, because that's one of my, uh, someone I know, I would say, I was defending this individual, and uh, the other person I spoke with that told me that uh, she decided not to come back and told me what events that she attended said that's not what we signed up for. Uh, that's not, and I said, I agree. That's not what was clear. Like, this guy kept changing stuff. He never admits to any fault whatsoever. They come up with every excuse in the world. That's why I felt it was important to warn you guys, and I was going to do a follow-up video down the road to let you all know what I went through. Uh, once again, I want that to never be forgotten. Uh, what I went through, and I wanted to be on a record to help protect myself in case anything ever happened to me. You guys would know this is the honest to God truth. My family members, I don't just make up stuff to lie because I was taught back in college as a young man in my early college years when I used to joke around. There was two older guys I used to hang with, and they were both former military, one of them I know was uh, formerly in the Army, and they said, hey, young blood, blood, they said, we know you're just joking around, but they said one thing as a young man you want to learn about, you don't want to do, you don't want to lie in your dick. That's basically how they told it to me. I hate to be kind of blunt, but that's what they said. So I'm the type of person, I don't just make stuff up, I don't lie on my dick, uh, but that's what they told me, basically, they explained they were OGs at the time. I was around 19 years old, that's when I was going to college in Ohio, and that was joking and they kind of schooled me on some advice this is some good advice from some old og guys i kind of looked up to at the time because they were really good with women and stuff like that would give you know young guys advice you know we would hang out kind of like uh the, you know watch fights and stuff like that uh do what you know young guys do and that's advice that they gave me so i want you all to know i don't just come on here and just uh make stuff up now i will let you all know like when I said allegedly, like things we can't confirm, we can't prove things that have not been independently proven. But from my personal experience, as well as confirmed news reports, articles that have been released, uh, personal testimonies from people that I know, things that I've witnessed, I can't speak on those things. And I can confirm other so-called gurus or people that have hosted conference calls that I have never met formally, that I don't know personally, I can confirm some of the things they went over were accurate. Like I can confirm Bruce, with whether people, what they feel about him, what he said was accurate. I can confirm some of the things that TNT Tony said is highly accurate. Matter of fact, one of the subscribers who reached out to me some years ago, she even told me things, uh, by the way, and I put, uh, it sounds like the information even trickled back to TNT from what I would gather I don't really listen to his conference calls as much anymore or when his brother Ray Ren kind of took over, you know, when he was going through the situation he was going through, I was still tuning in from time to time. But even I uh, think I put, put them up on some information dealing with uh, how I knew about brick and mortar institutions that actually physically sold Iraqi dinar when a lot of people didn't even know. They just thought it was online dealers that sold it. They didn't even know about uh, brick and mortar locations. Now I can't speak on, if those locations still do, because we are we are getting closer to things happening, potentially, uh, I can't say, but you have to do your own due diligence in the areas. And, and I didn't talk about that that much, but the subscriber at the time who reached out to me and I shared this with, she was in the D.C. area and we got to talking and I said, what I suggest, I would look for the uh, brick and mortar uh, shops in your area in some instances, some coin shops that sell memorabilia currency and stuff like that were, were in the business. And she brought up a particular mall uh, that was like for a lot of government employees that shopped at because she had a, a security clearance or and she told me what level security clearance she had. And I suggested and she told me she did follow up with me. And, and this is good when I help someone 
uh, give them input, I'm appreciative if they are able to uh, give me information back if they were successful with the information. And she reached back out to me and said, yes, I picked up some dinar. It was at this particular mall or institution that was really popular amongst the D.C. area that deals with like uh, exchange, uh, exchanging currency or something to that effect. And I said, OK, cool. I was able to help her out based off the advice that I had given her. Now, this is the first time I think I've told that story in more detail. By the way, I won't say her name to protect her identity. It has been a long time, uh, by the way, since I have spoken with her. Uh, but that this is a real true testimony story. And I was able to help uh, because she had purchased some uh, dinars from somebody else out of state. And I said, you should, it's better if you go through a more uh, authorized like dealer or someone, because I was hearing stories that people were just giving their currency to people to hold it for them or say they would exchange it and they would go to Reno. And they say it's saying similar to precious metals. If you let somebody else hold it, hold it for you, you don't own it. And, and my friend took me to a preppers meet years ago and the guys were saying, you want to hold the physical. So you don't want to trust uh, someone to hold something for you. You want to hold that yourself, by the way. But, you know, that is for what it is. But I'm just sharing that story. So that's kind of an update. Uh, there's some more things, uh, some dates that are coming up in May that I hear things are getting closer. XRP has made a lot of partnerships. There's uh, particular coins. My source was telling me. So the reason not only XRP uh, is going to be part of the new ba digital banking system, the quantum financial system called QFS, it's an acronym or mon moniker for a uh, quantum financial system. It's going to replace the old legacy system uh, that's going to be phased out dealing with SWIFT uh, and the new system is going to be brought in. So basically XRP and these certain cryptocurrencies that are called ISO coins, ISO 2022 or something like that 2022 certification when the dust settles and they pu pull the plug whenever they do this is one thing we don't know I'm not this close on the inside but some people might be that far on the inside when the dust settles uh, and, and regulations come down they still have to uh, vote they want uh, regulations and stuff put in place then that's when they're going to allow those coins to come rise from the ashes now, we could potentially see, because we're in one of the greatest bull, micro, bull cycles ever, it's still not too late. Uh, and we saw new all-time highs this past uh, March, it was, where people were shocked that for the first time ever, Bitcoin uh, surpassed all-time highs before the halving event, April 19th. You know, the halving, those who all know, who understand that concept is when there's less uh, supply and circulation, because what makes... Bitcoin, a valuable asset, is its rarity and that only so many people uh, can own it. And that's why a lot of institutional investors have come in. They now have ETFs and things of that sort. So after the halving, that cuts down on the supply and everything to sum, sum things up. So, you know, when something becomes, there's a less supply of it, then that increases. You have the law of supply and demand. So the demand for something increases then you see the prices go up kind of like if there's like a famous basketball player shoe like years ago when the gray Michael Jordan shoes came out, there was only so many made in circulation at the time. They intentionally did not make a lot on purpose. So uh, there was a stampede of people at the time. I remember years ago uh, I was in the mall, including I was one of them and a lot of people I was close were close to getting access and they shut stores down. There was fights that broke out. People were getting robbed because they only made uh, only so many of these particular gray Michael Jordan shoes, by the way. Me and my friends, some one of my best friends, I'll never forget, years ago, uh, by the way, this is an example, law of supply and demand, uh, by the way. And then as throughout the years, you know, people have gotten older and then his brand uh, has become more marketable because he's known as one of the greatest, and in, in my personal opinion, the GOAT the greatest basketball player that ever lived, uh, my favorite NBA player of all time, my number one on my list, uh, MJ, definitely, uh, and the way his brand has excelled and, and sustained itself for many years and even paved the way uh, for other athletes and people to duplicate and be able to do similar things that he has done. Uh, the prices have even gone up even higher 
throughout the years and when you add in inflation. So that's an example. Uh, there's going to be less supply of Bitcoin. So things are still are getting ready to heat up from what I hear. I was hearing from the guys I follow that read the charts and stuff, said a short squeeze is coming, but we're in a, a potential uh, area. Still, there was an accumulation phase where we had a big drop not too long ago. There was a major pullback, and some were worried. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm bullish on certain meme coins, but you want to be careful, as my source was telling me, and this is with all a lot of cryptos, you want to make sure you have a separate supply in the ISO coins. You can look up what the ISO coins are coins that are backed in the meantime. And I said, I still got to do some things myself. But uh, meme coins I'm bullish on, uh, I saw Pepe went up again not too long ago, even though there was a big pullback. A lot of coins pull back during the uh, pullback uh, phase of Bitcoin uh, drop not too long ago. Uh, and I, I'm going to tell you, I'm bullish on Shiba Inu and uh, Bonk. Bonk is part of Solana's ecosystem. In case you don't know, Shiba is part of Ethereum's ecosystem. One of the things I think Shiba has use case scenario uh, and, and it's a particular project because of it. It has a DeFi, decentralized exchange, uh, Shiba swap. Uh, it's got the bone token. So it's got utility and smart, like smart contracts and stuff where they can add liquidity. Uh, you can, uh, how can I put it? Similar to high yield accounts, they can accrue interest or things of that sort separately from the coin itself. But those are like that deals with the DEXs that's separate from just buying and holding the coin itself. But uh, I'm bullish, similar just like holding stocks in major corporations. And many of these cryptos have partnered with major corporations. Uh, you'd be surprised out there uh, when you look at the ecosystem. That's one of the ways you can tell, like Hedera Hashgraph. Uh, has a really large uh, ecosystem, major partnerships with uh, major uh, Fortune 500 cor corporations, uh, corporations around the world, uh, and it's many things happening. I hear Chainlink uh, has some type of partnership with Ripple, and there there's some coins that are projects with the people that are behind the uh, the developers that are behind these uh, coins that are similar to stocks that are partnered with major corporations are aware and they're forming partnerships because they don't want their coins when uh the powers that be decide to destroy a lot of them they don't want their coins to get destroyed or, or, or to fall to the wayside so they have strategically partnered themselves with uh you know some of the iso partnerships of coins that are going to be part of the new digital banking system the new uh digital ledger system 